Threats of China bombing Australia. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because the media is talking about warnings or threats of Beijing bombing Australia with long-range missiles. Well, let's have a look at this and have a little bit of a talk. So, chilling warning from Beijing to bomb Australia with long-range missiles should Canberra support the US military action in Taiwan. Now, let's have a look first at simply, I want to introduce you to the Nuke Map website, and I will bring this up here. Because that's, this is what we're going to be talking about. And here you can look at different, well, different areas. And we've got Brisbane, my city. And we can you can specify how many kilotons or pick a bomb. Everyone, all the different types of bombs that they have in the world. Let's have a look at Hiroshima. A 15 kiloton, the little boy bomb. And we can detonate it. We'll clear all effects. And there's a few other things. Let's go. Um, we want the other effects, the casualties, and the radioactive fallout. And ready? We're going to detonate a bomb, right? Where should we do it? Where should we do it? Um, let's do it. You know what? Let's do it on uh, Parliament House. There we go. Okay. Parliament House is getting nuked in in Brisbane. Ready? We'll detonate. So there we have it. And I'll just have a drink of coffee while this calculates. So you've got an estimated fatalities of 15,000. 50,000 or 51,000 injuries and you have the fireball range is here so 180 meters so you all these buildings are just getting well decimated this is the heat blast range here uh, you've got 20 atmospheres 340 meters and if we zoom out we have the radiation radius 500 rems 1.2 kilometers and then moderate blast damage of five atmospheres five psi out to here and then third degree burns, 1.9. Think about that. Third degree burns you'll be getting just at that range. And then the light blast damage, just one atmosphere. And that's still enough to decimate everything. So, I mean, there you go, everyone. Let's have a look at the same thing. In We'll go down to good old Sydney, everyone. And we'll have a look at the impacts of it. Now, remember, the, these bombs had big impacts here. And where should we, where should we blast? Let's say they... You know, as it, uh, it was dropping on, where is it? Here we go. We'll go, you know, right at the wharfs here. Oh no, you know what? On the opera house. Okay, let's detonate. You can see it wouldn't take account of any any wave damage here, but nearly twenty thousand, eighteen thousand fatality, eighty four thousand injuries and that would be the blast in this area and you can see as well just how much of Sydney it would affect let's have a look at good old Canberra everyone the ACT let's see if they got the ACT I wonder if this video will get banned on YouTube looking at the implications where should we blast in Canberra guys you know what let's do you know what right ANU okay ANU is going to cop it and we'll detonate. So the fatalities are counting up. Six and a half thousand, fifteen thousand injuries. And you can just see the blast range of it. Now this this isn't like World War II tech, guys. This is an old bomb. Uh, not what they're actually going to deploy. And we'll have a look at that. We'll look here in Melbourne. Right in the center. So I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing to make people aware of. So you can test this and just look at these estimates. So that's what would happen. 23,000 in in Melbourne. And finally, let's look at Hobart. Because I think it may just be in the range of certain weapons. And we'll look at Hobart here, right in the middle. And we'll detonate. And you can see here, 10,000 fatalities, nearly 20,000 injured and much of the city decim decimated. So that's just showing you what would happen with nuclear blasts in some part of Australia, everyone. Now, this is the article. It's come out in the Daily Mail. You know, a Chinese propaganda newspaper, okay, a Chinese propaganda newspaper 
has warned Australia over the, a, the Taiwan conflict. Beijing has been ramping up efforts for Taiwan unification under One China. Newspapers said long-range strikes could be used if Australia supports the U.S., and chilling warnings come amid increased tensions between Canberra and Beijing. Now, I'll link to this article if you want to go through the whole thing, because it just looks at the different military comparisons that we've looked at here. You know, essentially, comparing Australia's military capabilities to China is kind of pointless. Uh, I, you know, on a traditional war, it, it, we wouldn't stand a chance. It's about breaking up their logistical ability to actually project their force to us in such a great distance because there's a, a you know big issue with that and you know the good old Collins they're pretty quiet everyone and it's a Chinese propaganda newspaper has encouraged Beijing to bomb Australia if Canberra supports United United military action in protecting Taiwan the editor-in-chief of the Global Time which is seen as Beijing's mouthpiece on foreign policy to the world said China should reiterate the long-range st- long-range strikes if Australia gets gets involved in a potential military conflict with Taiwan. I suggest China make a plan of imposing realitory punishments against Australia once its military interferes in the cross-strait situation, he wrote in an opinion piece. So, an editor's opinion piece. Okay? More warmongering. And we're jumping on it here as well. Let's have a look at what China's nuclear capabilities. So, they've got are land-based missiles, and uh, you can see what's developed from seventy-one to two thousand and nine. Uh, I got this from this is from two thousand six on Wikipedia. So you can see the the land-based missiles. Their cap- warhead yields are three point three megatons, up to four to five megatons. Everyone, what we were looking at was fifteen kilotons. Just those. We were looking at fifteen kilotons. This is megatons, so a thousand x. They've got. Um, these ones here, which, you know, 11,000 and 7,500. We don't know the yield of those. So I'm going to assume that they're 5 megatons. We can have a look here. You know, I've got submarine launches, 1 to 2 to 300 kilotons. Another one we don't know what the yield is. They've got strategic bombers, which don't have the same range. You know, 1 to 3 bombs. And here you've got short-range tactical missiles. They have got low-yield nuclear capabilities or deployment. And if we have a look here, this is showing you the conventional uh, uh, missile capabilities. These are the CCS-7 range of 300 and the CCS-6 range of 600 kilometers. So you can see all the local countries that are pretty much can be blanketed. South Korea entirely, Taiwan. The Philippines is out of range, much of Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand. Burma as well, Bhutan, Nepal, everywhere. Big chunk of India. Now, this is the their People's Liberation Army, the PLA. This is their ballistic missile, missile range. And this is what, as Australians, we definitely fall under. So, you know, it looks like everywhere. South America is the only real part of the world that's pretty much safe from their missile capabilities. Australia, we're, you know, the longest. So Tassie will get the JL-2 at 8,000 kilometer range. The DF-31 at 7,000 can get most of Australia. And the DF-4 can get, you know, probably Broome and Darwin. So they've got the missile capability to reach Australia, everyone. This is just showing their surface-to-air missiles can even get to Taiwan. So, I mean, establishing air dominance over over Taiwan would be very interesting to see what would happen there. I mean, it's, yeah. So let's have a look at what would happen if a 5-megaton blast hit. And we'll start with... Canberra. So 5,000. That's 5,000 kilotons. And we will detonate a 5 megaton blast in Hobart. Okay. So a little different, everyone. A little different. Okay. Now we're looking at 97,000 casualties, 49,000 injuries. You've got a radiation plume going far out. And if we have a look here, I mean, okay, the yellow is the fireball radius. Yeah, pretty much all of Hobart will be a fireball. Uh, the 500 ram radiation radius is three kilometers. Look at that. The heavy blast damage of 20 psi it goes out to here. Moderate blast damage is just going all the way, and I mean light blast damage, and then thermal radiation, third degree burns goes out to here. So Hobart would be completely 
gone, everyone. They'd be completely gone. So let's have a look while we're here. What about oh, Lonnie, the capital of the cloud token wallet? I don't think we'll even try there. It's too small. Melbourne. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to scare people by doing this, but uh, this is the thing. We've got to understand the capability of these weapons, particularly when we advocate for them ourselves. And this is in Melbourne. You can see here, I mean, you'd have radiation reaching nearly to Canberra, everyone. Nearly half a million estimated fatalities. 780,000 injuries, everyone. You know, you've got the fireball radius here, the yellow, the radiation radius, and the heavy blast damage, guys. Now let's have a look at the ACT. Similar type of thing. I mean, there you go. Look at that radiation over Sydney, Gosford, Newcastle. Look at that radiation plume going right out there, guys. Look at the firewall. 120,000 casualties. We'll look at Sydney as well. Yeah, right here. So you can understand why. 580,000. You can understand why the concept of mutually assured destruction has, in some ways, kept peace, everyone. Has kept peace. 800,000 injuries. I mean, there yeah, you have it. And we'll look at Brisbane, just to see how I'd cope. Here, yeah, I'd, I'd have no chance. I'm gone. There you go, 313,400 injured. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. And let's just say, you know, let's have a look at the Tsar bomb, the largest US bomb, 100 megatons. Uh, not that China has that capabilities, but just to give a comparison, I mean, there you go, everyone. That's, that's the fireball radius of six kilometers a six kilometer fireball, that's the fireball, that's moderate blast damage, that's thermal radiation levels, everyone, that's light blast damage. You know, it doesn't even predict anything else with that. So that's showing you, you know, if we were to get a nuclear attack and they've got, I think 20 of those, um, what capable weapons, 20, so they've got 20 of these warheads at five to uh, four to five megatons. 20 deployed at least at the time of this those are the worst ones if we say let's look at a you know what a 300 kiloton weapon so the jl1 the jl1 is 300 kilotons and what is what, what are we gonna what are we in range of the jl2 okay we don't know what the jl2 is at least here but let's assume it's a 300 kiloton weapon okay so let's see what a 300 kiloton weapon would do to different parts of Australia, everyone. Okay, we've seen if they could manage to get a four megaton weapon there. We've seen what would happen with the Tsar bomb. We'll do 300, we'll clear everything, and we'll detonate. Okay, so here you have, here you have, uh, that would still be 98,000 casualties, 265,000 estimated injuries there's the the radiation radius there's the blast radius there's the moderate blast damage and there's the fireball radius everyone and if we have a look what do we want here let's look at good old sydney as well if sydney got it Oh, hang on. What was it? 300. Error in calculating. Okay, I'll reload it. Anyway, that just shows you 
the capabilities that they actually have. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is remember the Scud fear, remember the Gulf War. We were all, the media was just going up and up and crazy about, oh, you know, Scud's are an arsenal of terror. They're going to reach everywhere. They're going to attack everyone. You know, there was even talk of it potentially reaching Australia if they modified it. I, I remember as a child seeing this and being afraid of it because that's what the media does. That's what they get the views. You know? Now, this can go two ways. This can lead to, to warmongering and, and, and this type of thing. What I would argue for is to, we need to our own a nuclear deterrent here in Australia. We need um, you know, a strategic nuclear capability and then use that to develop other industries and other capabilities that can lead on to that. What do you think, everyone? Can you see, th that's the th sad concern here in Australia. Can you see people actually accepting that can you see there being a will if, if we had you know nuclear capabilities that would limit the chances of other parties to attack us because we could attack back right now we can't we're dependent on other nations and then maybe we'd even have a nuclear industry and cheaper energy and we could offset some of that carbon that everyone's worried about anyway let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below thank you all for watching Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links on Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.